Welcome to Christian Financial Perspectives, where you're invited to gain insight, wisdom, and knowledge about how Christians integrate their faith, life, and finances with a biblical worldview. Here's your host, Christian investment advisor, financial planner, and coach, Bob Barber. Well, welcome back to Christian Financial Perspectives. This is going to be episode 118, right, Bob? We're getting up there. Yeah, we're getting up there. Yeah, we are. Of course, the first, what, hundred of them were podcast. Right. And now we're getting into Audio our videos. Yeah. yeah. So if you're if you're watching our videos, you can go back and listen to all of those audio versions of Christian Financial Perspectives. Video has been a little different, too. It has. Yeah. Got to worry about the lighting. Got to worry about your stage makeup, you know. <laughs> Got to worry about, you know, making sure you're wearing the right shirt. Is yep. your hair right? <laughs> Although we haven't actually gotten into the stage makeup yet. Yeah, no, we haven't. So if anyone's watching this in 4K, hopefully we look all right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what do we got for today, Bob? Five reasons you need an investment advisor. Now we're kind of in the middle of our fives. Remember, we're going to yep. do the triple five. So last our last episode was five reasons you need a financial planner. Okay. Today is five reasons <clears throat> you need an investment advisor. And the next one's going to be... a uh, Five reasons you need a Christian financial advisor. All right. Sounds good. Kind of well, goes with our Christian financial advisors. Oh, yeah. That's our name. <laughs> it is. Isn't that a good looking sign? You know, your wife did that logo, and I love that logo. I do That's too. the Word of God, and that has to do with Ecclesiastes 11, too. That, that yep. Give your portions of seven, yes, to eight, because you yep. do not know what uh, yeah. disaster may come got, upon the land. You got the Bible as the foundation. You got it. Yep. Now you know what our logo stands for. Yeah, it actually has some meaning. I'm okay. sure you wanted to know, right? Oh yeah, it was the it was actually the top question. Yeah, exactly. Everybody's asking in the yeah. comments. That's right. <laughs> so let's start with a scripture, Bob. Okay. You want to read Proverbs fifteen twenty two. Yeah. You've heard me quote that one a few times. All I've right? heard a few times. I don't even have to look at it. Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. Don't go it alone. Basically, that's what it's saying. Now you said you didn't have to look at it. <clears throat> How's our audience not know you didn't have a teleprompter? Because uh, I don't, <laughs> but I do have my computer right here, okay? <laughs> it helps right. us. Well, let's go into number one, risk analysis. This is where an investment advisor will help. First of all, you've got to understand what risk is. And there's right. risk and reward. And when you're investing, you're going to have a roller coaster ride. Of course, the more conservative you go, it's going to be more like this. The more aggressive you go, it's going to be more ups and downs like this. But a good investment advisor can help you understand that. And we use a program called Riskalyze mm -hmm. that, that basically goes from a scale from zero to 100. And it's like if you fall right in the middle, that's what we call a balanced investor or a moderate investor. Right. Or, and that would be like a score of 50, 55 right in there. A uh, score like 20 would be more conservative, of course. That's yeah. going to be your, like your ultra conservative. <laughs> and so it has to do with these the portfolios that we'll talk about here in just a minute, the different portfolios and, and how uh, we can invest you and how much up and down tolerance you can take, especially right now in this crazy bear yeah. market that we're in. Uh, you know, and what's your time horizon and what's your mm -hmm. risk score? And everybody's risk score is different. I mean, I've, I've seen somebody that's 75 have a risk score of 80, 85. I've seen yeah. somebody that's 30 have a risk score of 30 or 20. Yeah. So everybody's risk score is different. But understanding that is key on or in investing correctly mm -hmm. because it doesn't really matter what your age is. Mm -hmm. That risk comes into... What is that individual investor household? What are they comfortable with on the downside? Mm -hmm. Because you can't have the upside without the downside risk. But also, you can't you can't uh, have know, the upside right? without the downside. Uh, well, that is for another See, topic. That, I know, you know we'll, we'll have to cover the dangers be... of fixed index annuities. We'll have to cover that one. Oh, okay, but that so, seems to be what everybody wants. They want all yeah. the upside, but they don't realize there's a downside. Yeah, and risk is reward. So yeah. if you want greater reward, you take greater <clears throat> risk. But that again comes comes into it. You know, we we ascertain what is the actual risk that an investor is comfortable with because mm -hmm. they have to have some risk that they're comfortable with, and then from there we can help them figure out. All right, well, what is the best placement for investing them according to what they're comfortable with and what their goals are? Which 
the leap goes right into number two, short and long-term investment goals. It, it does. So a good investment advisor, you notice I say a good investment advisor, right? Okay, is going to make clarify? sure they, and, and they're going to uh, look at what your different investment objectives are and, and, you, and categorize your portfolio too, because you can have a portion of your portfolio that you're going to want for the next one or three years. Mm -hmm. But then there's a portion of the portfolio that you say, well, I'm not going to touch that for 10 plus years or even 20 to 25 years. Right. So when I, I, there's short-term goals and there's long-term goals and there's mid midterm goals. Yeah. And, and usually the long-term goals, I mean, if somebody is uh, 30 years old and they're wanting to retire at 60, well, that's a long-term goal. Right. So that money can could be more aggressive if the risk tolerance can take right. it. Right. Okay. Uh, but then you may have a short-term goal. Maybe you're in your 30s and you have a child that's going to be going to college in the next 10 years. That's a shorter-term goal or the next five years. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you're 58 and you're going to retire at 60 or you're 60 and you're going to retire at 62, that is a very short, that's short-term money right. too. So all those different investment goals go with a financial plan as yeah. well. And, and, and where are you on the roadmap? Yeah. And again, it's not based on, it's not just a, how old are you? Therefore, this is your risk. Because I know you've talked about that before. That, that used to be kind of the old school. Of, it was. Well, if you're in your 20s, then this is what you should be doing. If you're in your 40s or if you're in your 60s, like, well, this is how you should invest. But it really comes down to, like you said, what is the time frame? Is it a short term? Is it a long term? Because you could be 60 and have a long term goal. Because we have clients that are set up where they don't need more income than what they currently have. Mm -hmm. And they are older. They're in their 60s or 70s. But they have a very aggressive strategy for maybe one of their accounts because they're intending that for their kids or their grandkids. That's exactly it's what not, I was going to say. You, 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 yeah. we're, we're thinking along the same route. I, I have I have some grand, grandfathers and, grandpa, and grandmas and grandparents that want to um, give – a large sum later to their great grandchildren or grandchildren. That's yeah. a, that's a 20, 25 year time horizon. Yeah. Okay. So even though the client is older and you would think, Oh, they shouldn't be aggressive because they're old. They don't have, who knows how much longer they have, but it makes sense that they have a long-term goal because it's not for them. Right. It's for another generation. That's right. So the, the third thing is, is a good investment advisor is about diversification and asset allocation. Okay. Right. I said that kind of fast. Diversification and asset allocation. I say it five times fast. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'll get you. That's a tongue twister. But this is about building a portfolio based on different goals and objectives using different asset allocation models. And you right. know, we build our models here. Mm -hmm. We have five models and those models are very actively traded and we look at different sectors of the economy like technology, real estate, energy, healthcare, shipping, transportation, financial companies, utilities, and the list goes on. Right. So you build that diversification as well as amongst all those different sectors, as well as diversifying in companies by size, revenue, profitability, price to earning ratios, we call it the PE ratio. And we build that across many stocks and bonds and ETFs and mutual funds. So a good investment advisor is going to look at all of that. So there's, there's a, a lot few to it. items to look at is what you're saying. It's it, yeah. it takes a while. Yeah. Okay. So number four. Number four, which I guess kind of goes right on track with after you've set your risk, you've got your objective, short and long term, you've got your diversification. We get into monitoring. And that you, know, you know, how often do you hear see me monitoring our portfolios and our markets? How many I mean, hours I'll, are there in a day? Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm monitoring when you're not asleep. I, yeah, and many, and I was talking to the Garrett today. Um, he's like, you wake up at two thirty in the morning, and many times I do, and I go, <laughs> I I can't get to sleep until I know what are the international markets doing. So I'll get up. Look at what the international markets are doing, what the futures are doing. Then I can go back to bed. It's crazy. And I love doing this. You know, Sean, if you start asking me about who's popular in Hollywood or what music is popular, I, I don't know. That's but, okay. I don't know. But I, I know what's going on in the financial markets. And I love the financial markets. And I really never want to retire because I love the financial markets so much. And it's because of my high energy. You have the high energy, too. 
and that monitoring, and we're, we're monitoring the markets on a daily, weekly, uh, monthly basis for risk, reward. We look at short-term and long-term investment opportunities for your portfolios and in all the different sectors too, overweighting yeah. or underweighting different sectors, overweighting, underweighting, <clears throat> large cap or small cap. I mean, it just goes on and on. But it's not for the purposes of day trading. No, what, what it's we're looking not at for that. that is we're still looking at a longer term. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got one to three years, three to five years, five to six, eight years, 10 years. We have these different primary strategies that we're monitoring. But when we're looking at that daily, weekly, monthly, it's more to see the overall trends on if we're in a bear market, do we see the, the trend starting to reverse? Maybe we're getting back into a bull market. Or if we're in a bull market and it looks Is like it getting it's overvalued, overheated, exactly. then we might start turning down. So those are the things that we're really looking for, not the way you would hear like on CNBC, they say, oh, the traders the, or the investors. You mean the day traders? I, I don't know. Yeah, they call them investors and they're yeah. traders, you know, they're, I mean, because they're trading every single day. We yeah. do not trade every or day. Or within the same day. And then but, that's but, not how we But look we at do it. tweak our portfolios a little bit by a percent here or 3% here. Right. Or so, and, and, that, and that can be on a weekly or a monthly yeah. Or even a, a bi-monthly, I've had people say, well, how often do you rebalance? We rebalance as needed. Right. Exactly. Okay? It depends on how fast the markets are moving. Yep. And then the fifth one for today, and believe me, there's five today we're covering, just like we covered on financial planning. When you're looking at investment advice, it, there's there could be 50 areas. We could talk yeah. about this for two or three hours, and I love talking it, too. But we I won't can make your head, I can make your head nearly you feel like it's going <laughs> to split open when I talk to people. They're like... Okay, I get it. <laughs> but I love this stuff. Okay. Yeah. What's the number five? Number five is to stay on track. Oh, yeah. I'm the, I think that our main job, Sean, and we're registered investment advisors. Our, one of our main jobs is, is to help people keep emotions out of investing. Yep. Emotions and investing go together like oil and water. So they don't mix. They do not mix. You should not allow your emotions to have a part of investing uh, Garrett, I'd like you to put up the emotions chart, if you could do that, and just show how, you know, let that stay up there a little bit and let people see. Because if you look at the emotions, at the peak of the market, everybody wants to get in. Yep. And when it goes down, it's just bye, bye, bye. It can only everybody go wants here. to get out. And when everybody's yeah. wanting to get out, when, that's when the guys like Warren Buffett are just coming in and going, thank you, people. I'm getting to buy these stocks on sale. Yep. But for yep. some reason, it's the human tendency Humans want to buy everything on sale except stocks, and I don't get I that. Know, I but, know. But that's well, the way it is. Like cars. I, I know that's been a hot topic for the last couple of years. It's always a hot topic cars with both been, of us. Yeah. Right? We talk about cars a lot around here. But the used car market has been crazy high. You, yeah. know, you can't get a, a new car hardly at all. And so if all of a sudden you went to the dealer and they said, well, not only do we have the car in stock that you wanted and it's brand new, but I can actually give it to you for 20% off MSRP. Who wouldn't say, yes, please? Yeah. But you're right. When it comes to the markets, the emotions of investors many times betray them, and they end up doing the opposite of what they should be doing. And so when we're having, especially a bear market, and I know you can attest to this, our main job when interacting with clients is helping them to manage their emotions in this time and realize, in the grand scheme of things, are you on track? And if you're still on track for your goals, just take a deep breath and breathe, breathe it out. Exactly. You know? <laughs> and many times it's better not to look. Okay. I mean, you're on a roller coaster. We talked about this a few weeks ago. You don't want to jump off the roller coaster when it's doing this. Okay. Yep. All it's right. It's dangerous. <laughs> so those are just five of the many reasons you need a good registered investment advisor. And, you know, like I said, we could take a few hours of this talking about this, but and we want to do that well with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Just like we said about financial planning, don't, don't go it alone. Don't go it alone. Two are better than one. Share that scripture again that we love. Well, as uh, scripture says in Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. We're here to help you. God bless. And thank you for joining us. We invite you to listen to all of our past episodes covering many financial topics from a Christian perspective. 
To make sure you don't miss any of Bob's upcoming episodes, you can subscribe to Christian Financial Perspectives on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or Amazon Music. To learn more about integrating your faith with your finances, visit ChristianFinancialAdvisors.com or call 830-609-6986. Investment advisory services offer the Christian Investment Advisors, Inc., DBA Christian Financial Advisors, also known as Christian Financial Advisors Management Group, a registered investment advisor. Comments from today's show are for informational purposes only and not to be considered investment advice or recommendations to buy or sell any company that may have been mentioned or discussed. The opinions expressed are solely those of the host, Bob Barber, and his guests. Bob does not provide tax advice and encourages you to seek guidance from a tax professional. While Christian Investment Advisors believes the information to be accurate and reliable, we do not claim or have responsibility for its completeness, accuracy, or reliability.